from Indiana's news leader. Eyewitness News at Noon starts now. Welcome to Eyewitness News at Noon. I'm Naomi Paskovitz in for Scott Swan. It has been a violent day in Indianapolis with several people taken to the hospital after a series of shootings on the west side. One shooting on Harding Street involved two neighbors and a police standoff. Another sent a teenage boy to the hospital. We have team coverage on the violence starting with our crime beat reporter Steve Jefferson live from Minnesota Street with new details on that shooting. Steve? Well, one of the two teenagers shot this morning uh, got out of the hospital. He came back home on crutches about an hour ago. Now, after that, a Metro detective spent about 45 minutes talking to him inside his home here on West Minnesota, although the shooting did not happen here at this location. That detective eventually took him downtown in a squad car. He is, again, one of two teens shot this morning. Fortunately, both of their gunshot wounds are non-life threatening. Now, we can tell you that the first shooting happened near Howard Street this morning. Police officers rushed to the scene, and there they found a teenager suffering from a gunshot wound to the hand, and they believe that shooting may have happened in a nearby alley. Eyewitness News has learned that that particular teenager did not cooperate with officers who were trying to find out how the shooting happened and who fired the gun. Moments later, dispatchers got a 911 call about a second teenager shot near West Minnesota. That's where officers found a 15-year-old at home who had been shot in the leg. Now, officers immediately started asking questions to try to find out how the two shootings uh, that are so close to each other, how they're connected. People living in this stretch of Harding Street will hope the violence will stop. It is troublesome since it all has kind of been in the same area. Um, and so, you know, there, I feel there's a quick response. So I don't feel unsafe personally, but it is alarming, um, you know, with the rates going up and especially just so close here on Harding. Now, several officers showed up at the home on West Minnesota Street, including an evidence technician uh, who also waited for the Metro detective to arrive on the scene. Again, the gunshot wounds to the two teenagers this morning are both non-life threatening. Again, one out of the hospital in downtown talking with police. They're trying to get to the bottom of this. Again, several people shot in the last couple of days and people in this area hoping that the violence will subside. Back to you in the studio, Naomi. All right, Steve, we know you'll be keeping close track of that one for us. Well, back on Harding Street, where two shootings took place, police are investigating that incident that left one person shot in the hand. But around 6.30 this morning, police got the call to another shooting, this one in the 1800 block of Harding. It turned into a standoff, bringing in numerous police resources and lasting for nearly three hours. Eyewitness News reporter Kerry Klein was on the scene this morning and joins us live now with more on what started all of this and how it ended. Carrie. Hey, good afternoon, Naomi. The good news in all of this is that the events that unfolded in front of this duplex this morning ended peacefully with a suspect in custody. The more troubling part, though, is that this argument may have been sparked by something as simple as a dispute between two women over a parking space. This has been going on for over a year. I didn't told my landlord about it. I didn't told everyone about it. They told me, oh, deal with it. She's okay. No, it's okay. Now my baby's laying up in the hospital with a gunshot wound. Darlene says the woman accused of shooting her adult daughter lives in the other half of their duplex and has been bullying them for months. It was a dispute the whole neighborhood was aware of. Go look out in the back. She didn't bust glass all in the back. She didn't flatten tires. It was petty. I tried to stay to myself, you, you, but you couldn't help but see it. So mm -hmm. it was just it was bound to escalate, though. Are you surprised it escalated to this? Mm, no, 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 not really. And I heard two gunshots, and I laid down on the floor, and I laid there for a minute. Then I heard an argument, and I came outside and. To my knowledge, is a parking spot. When police responded, they found the victim with two gunshot wounds. She was taken to the hospital in serious condition. Then a standoff requiring the SWAT team. The situation ended peacefully with the suspected shooter safely in custody. We're back to people, places, and behaviors. We talked about anger management. We talked about conflict resolution. They decided to sell a dispute among people who know each other with a weapon at this location. Back to the victim's mother. She says she tried to get help for this situation repeatedly. 
The same gun she shot my baby with is the same gun she been pulling out on me and my daughter for over a year. And the police and my landlord tell me basically to deal with it. So now I got to deal with my baby with two bullet wounds in her body. And to further complicate matters, we understand both women have young children and those children were in the home at the time all of this happened. Now, Chief Height says that this is one of the high risk neighborhoods identified by IMPD and the Department of Public Safety and the strategy to focus on mental health assistance, drug treatment, drug abuse treatment and the transition after incarceration will continue in addition to the heightened police presence here. Reporting live from the city's west side, Carrie Klein. Channel 13 Eyewitness News.